Hey everybody, welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays, your source of animal rights news and gossip all packed into a short, sweet three minutes on everyone's favorite day, a Thursday. It's a beautiful day outside, but as usual, I am inside working on a whole lot of things, keeping super busy. three minutes on the clock and let's get down to business. I already forgot what the first story was. All right, a vegan activist alliance is kind of like the old anonymous for the voiceless in New York who broke off and formed this organization is doing all sorts of great things, including doing a lot of mutual aid. So they have teamed up with an organization called Chili's on Wheels, which is a Latinx queer vegan food justice organization that basically does meal on wheels. Um, and they are teaming up to bring uh, vegan food um, as well as clothing and supplies to people in need around New York City, which I think is awesome. Good job. Next up is a story that I got a lot of emails and messages about for whatever reason, but uh, people wanted to let me know that Gary Yurofsky is back. I feel like that's a bit of a stretch, but yeah, we'll see. He's done a couple of like audio recordings to be Gary about COVID-19. Like everyone's waiting around for Gary Yurofsky to fill us in on the details of COVID-19. And people are always like, Jake, why do you hate Gary Yurofsky so much? He's done so much for the animals. I don't know, I've known Gary through email and activist circles since the mid-90s, and particularly in his later years before he retired. Um, I just uh, cannot get on board with this, the whole like holier than now, everyone else is a piece of garbage except for me uh, type of activism, which seems to be perpetuated by people like Joy Carpstrong and Paul Bashir and Anonymous for the Voice of Leadership, that the best way to change the world and change hearts and minds is to treat everyone like complete garbage. Because what Gary puts at the end of his most recent videos is sure to convince people to change hearts and minds. You are the filthiest of all creatures. Wake the fuck up, shut the fuck up, and live a vegan lifestyle already. Always the way with words. When I think of the variety of things that got me to switch to a vegan lifestyle and become an animal rights activist for a quarter of a century, I always think of the beautiful and kind words of people like Gary Yurofsky when he said, I truly hope that oppression torture and murder return to each uncaring human tenfold. I hope that sons accidentally shoot their fathers on hunting excursions, while carnivores suffer heart attacks that kill them slowly. Every woman ensconced in fur should endure a rape so vicious that it scars them forever. What about the time? I hereby challenge you to top my anti-rape position. Go ahead. I dare you. What? Yeah, I thought so. As usual, I win. Checkmate. You lose. Fuck you. Now I know everyone's going to come back and say, but Gary Yurofsky got me to go vegan. That's great that he got you to do those things. And you're still doing it. Fantastic. I'm proud of you. But if we're really trying to reshape this world and really trying to get the 7.7 .7 billion people to switch to a plant-based lifestyle or a vegan lifestyle, and I get we don't need all 7.7 .7 billion people, um, but even a, f a third of that, a couple billion, easy enough. But I don't think the way that we're going to do that is threaten them with violence or force them or say that they all should be raped or murdered unless they switch to a vegan lifestyle lifestyle change doesn't really work that way. And a lot of people will point to Israel and say 8% of the population is vegan. Now, uh, thanks to Gary Rofsky's greatest speech ever told being translated into Hebrew. Well, even Gary says that, that wasn't his doing. As he says, he got the ball rolling, but the activists did all the hard work. But let's just pretend Gary transformed 8% of Israel's population into vegans um, in 2015. By 2017, where were we at? Oh, 4%. Where does that leave us? Vegan population, cut in half. So when people are like, Gary's back, you know what my response is? Who cares? The current state of the vegan movement around the world with its leaders and heavy thinkers and figureheads is not something terribly impressive. In fact, a lot of those people engage in a lot of chest pounding and machismo and toxic masculinity and wishing violence on people or that people are raped because they're not exactly the way we want them to be. They're xenophobic and transphobic. Caring about anything else should be left at the door. So when people are like, Gary's back, I'd be like, great, he'll fit right in. He's just one more chest-pounding guy full of bravado that likes to hear himself talk and he can be put back up on that pedestal. But at the end of the day, it's not really achieving very much. So people often say, well, what should we do about it? And the answer, 
I think we should do nothing about it. In fact, I think it's time that we just start to give up on that portion of the vegan movement. But that's a discussion for another time. I'm thinking in two or three weeks. Finally, if you're not familiar with U.S. politics, it, usually it's like one part real politics and debate and discussion about the issues in like 20 parts political theater. And in a kind of a weird way, it's a bit entertaining. And what we have going on in Berkeley, California is a mayoral election, meaning um, they will be electing their new mayor in November. And so the process of like who qualifies to run, who's announcing they're going to run and getting enough signatures, so forth and so on in order to be on the ballot um, starts now. So a couple of people have thrown their name uh, into the hat, one of them being Wayne, the co-founder of Direct Action Everywhere, who is now running for mayor of uh, Berkeley, California. He's got some interesting programs that he's running on that sound pretty Pretty decent from what limited amount of information I've seen he doesn't really seem to be pushing um, the meat-free Berkeley thing that DXE loves but I'm imagining he will um, the idea of banning meat which is like I said in the Gary segment nothing says getting people to change their lifestyles by forcing them into doing it um, but the third person who's thrown their name in the hat is Aiden and he is someone that also is running on interesting platforms, has some good things to say. But interestingly, he is a former member of Direct Action Everywhere. And the local Berkeley rag, Berkeley side, has written an article about the mayoral runoff. And their first sentence is, a controversial animal rights activist is running for mayor of Berkeley. And so seemingly is a former member of his group who's accused him of leading a cult. Now we can discuss the merits of that sentence and whether it's true or not. But if that is an indicator of what kind of political mudslinging and theater is coming our way, I am all here for it. All right, that's all, folks. Episode 2, Season 3 of Are We Winning coming out this Monday, talking about pressure campaigning and the initial thinking um, that we need to do in order to get those things rolling. So keep an eye out for that. And in the meantime, keep fighting. Keep fighting.